I was expecting two high quality women singles quarterfinals at Wimbledon today, but as I watched those two matches, this is how I felt. Ooh, Ooh it's nice. Ooh, it's nice. Just pick one. Hey, it's nice. Hey, my name is Christian Bastnight, and welcome to Christian's Court, where I cover tennis from all angles. If you have not already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and help me reach my goal of 15,000 subscribers. But it's not only helping me, but it helps you stay notified whenever I post more great content like this, especially throughout the Women in Championships. Now, there will be no first time slam singles finalists in the top half of the Women in Women's draw as former major winners Elena Rabakina and Barbara Krajikova claim the final two semifinal spots. Elena Rabaka is into her first slam semifinal since the 2023 Australian Open as she dominated Elena Svitolina 6-3, 6-2. I thought this Svitolina was playing great honestly to start the tournament as she beat Ange Jabeur and then she recently dominated Xin Yu Wang but she just did not show up today at all. The Ukrainian started strong though and she broke Rabakina immediately in the first game and it was really promising but it just went from worse to worse sir from there on out for the 21st seed because the fourth seed just broke right back and did not drop serve for the rest of the match. Svitolina meanwhile got broken four times throughout this match and she did not make life easy on herself with her subpar serving. Now leading into this match and her four matches prior before obviously the quarterfinals, Svitolina won 74% of first serve points and 60% of her second serve points. Today, those numbers look drastically different as she only won 61% of points behind the first serve and just 28% of points behind the second. Rabakina definitely did well to be on the front foot and she really won this match by being the aggressor. The match was decided on Elena's racket. Svitolina made eight winners to eight unforced errors and just did not press and force anything at all out there and once again looked very tentative, which is is unexpected because she played the exact same way in the Rolling Girls fourth round match just um, over a month ago and she got her she got beat pretty bad <laughs> I was about to cuss. She got beat pretty badly, so I expected her to come out with a different game style, but she just did the same thing, which is kind of crazy to me. Rabakina, meanwhile, hit 28 winners to 15 unforced errors, so great stats from her. The problem for Svitolina was that she had no depth on her shots at all. Pretty much the majority of her shots, 50%, in fact, of her all those balls landed in no man's land meanwhile 56 percent of rabakina shots were actually deep in the court bottom line rabakina attacked far more than svitolina was able to and a lot of that was due to the difference in the amount of depth they got on their shots rabakina had a low first serve percentage at 51 percent of first serves in but she was effective whenever she did make a first serve as she won 85 percent of first serve points she's been using that serve plus one very well throughout the tournament and today was no exception she especially used that out wide serve to Svitolina's either forehand or backhand, whether it be deuce or add, and then finished off points nicely with the forehand. It was just a great clean match for Rambach, and I really have no true bad notes about it. It's the perfect performance, really. She got on and she got right off the court and wasn't tested at all. I was very disappointed from what I saw from Svitolina, and I actually was feeling like she could possibly pull out the upset with how well she had been playing throughout the tournament, but she just did not show up today at all. Now, looking at the other quarterfinal match that we had, Elena Ostapenko, she had come into the quarterfinals as the most dominant player of the remaining ladies, barely dropping games in her matches. That completely changed today as she lost to Babor Krachikova 6-4, 7-6. This match, I'm going to be very honest, was bad. Very low quality from both women, in fact. And the stats explain that, but I'll delve into that later. Ostapenko won the first two points on Krichikova's serve in the opening set in the match. And crazily enough, those two points that she won would be just two of the total three points that she earned on return in the entire first set, which shows you just how poorly Yelena returned. It's not like... Krachikova just served her off the court. Mind you, Babor did serve well throughout the, throughout the match, but really it was just Elena, Yelena doing the same old stubborn thing of just staying way too close to the baseline to return and not giving herself enough time or enough room to actually put balls back in play. And one thing about Ostapenko, the reason why she's so hot and cold is because of her redlining game style. When she's hot, she's dang near unbeatable. However, when she's cold, it's really... Just, it's not pretty, like we saw today. Also, Panko, she missed more returns than she made for sure. And I think that if she actually did back up and give herself more time, she would have had a higher 
higher return in percentage, I think she would have broken Krachikova a lot more by just making her play more shots. A lot of times Krachikova got love holds because of Austin Pickles crappy returning. Now, giving credit to Krachikova, she was smart and she made her opponent play whenever she needed to make her play. She also did well in mixing things up with the slices and also making Ostapenko move much more than she has been throughout the tournament, especially utilizing that forehand cross to really get the angles to move the lot being off the court. But I have to admit, Babor saying come on after every single point was annoying as hell. I'm sorry. And most of those points that she won were off of Ostapenko unforced errors. But hey, you know, can't can't hit the player, hit the game, I guess. Ostapenko, she started making more returns in play in the second set, which helped her gain a break advantage, and she went up 4-1. However, she lost the break, and I think she had two more opportunities to break back at 4-3, but could not you know, convert those opportunities. And then she got broken once again to allow Babor the opportunity to serve for the match at 5-4. The check definitely showed signs of nerves and Ostapenko broke her to put his back level and the two eventually went to a tiebreaker, which Krachikova just was the solid player of the two. I don't think Ostapenko played horribly in the tiebreaker, but Krachikova did well to hunker down and not make unforced errors and was just the better player in the end. Getting into the stats, we can definitely see that it was not the best match from either of these two women by any stretch. Both were in the negatives in terms of winners to unforced error ratio, but Ostapenko hit more winners with a minus 19 ratio compared to Barbora's minus 12, which made all the difference in the end. Elena also suffered from a low first serve in percentage from 40 with 49%, while Krachikov won 81% of points behind that first serve, which is really thanks to Ostapenko's poor returning. Elena showed really why she is not a slam champion, unfortunately, in this match. And you really have to bring it for seven matches in these two in the two-week span. And she has it probably for, you know, two, three matches, but then she'll play a great match and then she'll stink up the place the next one. And that's exactly what happened here. Rabakina will be the favorite in this semifinal against Krachikova. However, though, Krachikova leads the head-to-head 2 to nothing. Now, that being said, their last meeting was in 2022 at the Ostrava Open, where Rubakina was in a winning position there, but Krachikova, obviously, giving credit to her, she was the better player in the end. Looking at Krachikova's road to this semifinal, she it was not easy. She had to come through a tough opening round match against Veronika Kudermatova, I believe winning that one either 7-5 either or 7-6 in the third set. She's been taking down a lot of big hitters, as she took down Danielle Collins in the fourth round by a score of 7-5-6-3, and then now, of course, Ostapenko. I think she's definitely used to the pace now, which will help her a lot against Rubakina, who we all know hits a pretty big ball. Rubakina, meanwhile, she's played a few consistent baseliners this tournament when you consider how she beat Caroline Wozniacki and Elena Svitolina, although she handled those two very easily. However, she dropped her long set of the tournament against the German Laura Siegemann, who had a lot of variety, so I think that Krachikova does have a solid shot at really tripping up the Kazakhstanian because she is able to mix in a lot of slices, some drop shots, and really get Rabakina in an uncomfortable situation. Currently, Rabakina is in better form, so I think that Elena has the edge, but giving Krachikova the benefit of the doubt, it's hard to play Ostapenko, which is probably why her performance wasn't that great because the Latvian just does not give you a lot of rhythm. Krachikova would definitely need to be more solid from the ground than she was against Elena because Rabakina is far more consistent consistent and won't give her as many easy and careless errors. On the flip side, Rubakina likely will not have as many opportunities to dictate because Krachikova hits with much more depth and pace consistently than a Svitolina or Wozniacki. Also, she's a much better server than Elena, and she has their variety to really trip up Rubakina, like I mentioned earlier. I do expect a raise and level from Krachikova from her quarterfinal to now the semifinal, but I still do believe that Rubakina will be too solid, and I think that she has the edge in some other key departments too. One being having more women in experience. Of course, Rubakina is a woman champion, but also this will be Krachikova's first singles match on center court. I believe she has played on center court, of course, in doubles being a champion here in the years prior but playing singles on the most prestigious stage on at tennis in tennis history it might definitely uh, be an edge for Rabakina having far more experience here All, Elena also has the edge just having overall more energy left in the tank she's played three hours less in singles plus 
Krushigova, she played doubles the tournament, and she played doubles soon after her win against Ostapenko, although she fell in the quarterfinals in a three-set match, but still, we have to keep that in mind as well. Rabakina, too, has an overall more solid base level recently, as she has a superior 40-7 to win-loss record this year, while Krushigova, she's been in and out, hasn't played as much, and she's only played, in fact, 21 matches, and she has a 12-9 and record. She, did, she was injured, of course, but still, there's questions marks of whether she really is match fit and i know we, when talking about fitness we can't forget that rabakana has struck with her own health concerns but i think right now at least those are past her and kurchigova i think we'll, we'll have to watch out for her more than rabakana as far as if physicality will come in, into play if, especially if this one goes deep so yeah if you hadn't guessed i will be picking rabakana to win this match and if i were to predict a score i'd say seven six six four Rabakina and Krishigova are second up on center court tomorrow, followed by Jasmine Paolini and Donna Vekic. So I talked about that matchup a bit more in my previous video, so make sure you all watch that one if you want to hear my thoughts. That's all for this video, and let me know who you all think will be making the finals. Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post my Wimbledon Women's Singles Final Preview. Thank you all so much for watching and for your support, and I'll see you next time here on Christian's Court.